All right, guys, I split this into two videos and I did not do um, the last problem on page 66. So the video cut off on purpose. I'm now going to show you page 67. All right, it says create a rule for a line that contains the point one fourth, one and one fourth using the operation or description below, then name two other points that would fall on the line. So basically what they're doing is they're giving us one point and that one point will fit on all of these lines and they've given us like a description of um, or like a you know an operation that you have to do to um, apply to that point I guess so we need to make one for addition one that has a, a line a, the line is parallel to the x-axis multiplication parallel to the y x x axis and multiplication with addition okay so first let's talk about the addition um, I notice that when you go from one fourth to one and one fourth, you are really just adding X plus one gets you to Y, right? Because one plus one and one fourth equals one and one fourth. That one's pretty easy. Easy. All right. Add one to X. You could also say X plus one equals y. Okay, um, I'm going to give you the x values. I want you to find the y values. It's very easy because this is a very easy rule. So please pause the video, write the y values. Okay, this one was easy. Again, you could have gotten 2, 3, 4, 5. Simple enough. Okay, a line that is parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so I want to look down at this grid to try and explain to you how you know how to do this. This is the x-axis, right? So a line that is parallel to the x-axis is going to look like this. So if you think about this line, anytime you're moving the points, you're moving the x, let's say, um, I'm going to keep it here at the one. Let's say I, um, move over to the two. That's the X y value. I go up to the one. That's the Y value. So the Y value is one. Let's say the X value was zero. I go up. The Y value is one. So when you have a line that is parallel to the X axis, the y value is always going to stay the same. It's the opposite when you're talking about lines that are parallel to the y axis. In this case, the x value is always going to be the same, okay? So let's look, go back to part B. Remember, we're trying to find a line parallel to the x axis using this point. Well, I just told you that the y value always stays the same when you have a parallel line to the x axis. <clears throat> so the rule here then would be y equals one and one fourth. Or you could write like y is always one and one fourth. Either one um, would be fine. So my y values are going to be the same, one and one fourth. X is going to change. So you could do whatever you want in here. Let's say x will be one half. And X will be, I don't know, two. Easy enough. All right. Now we have multiplication. So what could we multiply when we're, remember our um, points are one-fourth, one and one-fourth. So right now I'm thinking, all right, what can I multiply X by? Because Y is bigger, so I know I'm multiplying this way. What can I multiply X by? X times what equals Y. All right, I'd like you to pause the video and try to determine what you think that multiplication will be. All right, welcome back. You should have paused the video. Um, so if you multiply X by four, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not by four, by five, 
you get one and one fourth. So multiply x by five. You could also write x times five equals y. Okay, um, let's say the points are one half and one. Please pause the video and find the y values. You should have gotten two and a half and five. All right, moving on. A line parallel to the y-axis. Well, it's the opposite of this, right? If it's parallel to the x-axis, the y stays the same. If it's parallel to the y-axis, the x stays the same. So now x is going to equal one and one fourth. You could also write x is always one and one fourth. Um, so for this one, oh, I'm sorry, not one and one fourth. The x value is one fourth. Sorry, guys. I'm making a lot of mistakes today. I think it's because it's I'm recording this right now on the weekend. It's Saturday, and I think I'm just a little tired. Okay, sorry. X is always one fourth. So X is one fourth for both of these. It doesn't matter what Y is, so you can do whatever you want. I'll do six and 12. All right, almost to the finish line here. Now we have to do um, addition and then, no, multiplication and then addition. So multiplying something and then adding. So um, I'm trying to think what could I multiply this by and then add something to get to one fourth. Well, I notice that one fourth is here and one fourth is here. So maybe at the end I could be adding one fourth, but then I need to think, all right, one fourth times what is going to get me to one. And then I'm going to add that. I'm going to add that one fourth after. So I want you right now to think, what can I multiply one and one fourth times what is going to get me to one? And the reason I'm saying one is because I'm taking this and I separate it from one fourth because I need to multiply and then add. I'm gonna add that one fourth later. So find what um, this question mark would be. Pause the video. All right, you should have found that you can multiply one fourth times four to get you to one. So the rule here could be multiply by four, then add one fourth. Cause remember I left that off for over here. So one and one fourth times four plus one fourth equals one and one fourth. This one involves a, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more work. All right, I'm gonna assign these two y va x values. I want you to solve for the y values. X is two, and then all x is also one half. Please find the y value, so please pause the video now. All right, this is eight and one fourth. This one right here is two and one fourth. All right, last one. It says, Mrs. Boyd asked her students to give a rule that could describe a line that contains the point 0 0.6, 1.8. Avi said the rule could be multiply x by three. Okay, so I'm gonna start writing this stuff down. Avi says, multiply x by three. So x times three equals y. Ezra, claims this could be a vertical line and the rule could be x is always 0 0.6. And then um, one more, Eric. He thinks the rule could be add 1.2 to x. So Eric thinks x plus 1.2 equals y. Mrs. Boyd says 
All the lines they are describing could describe a line that contains the point she gave. Explain how that is possible and draw the lines on the coordinate plane to support your response. Okay, so let's first plot this point, 0 0.6, 1.8. So I need to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then um, 1.8. So I know it's going to be 2 below. Okay, here is that point. So let's plot what they have done. Um, let's first do Avi. So he is saying, I might actually need some more room. This probably doesn't seem like enough room. Um, Avi says X, oopsies, X oh, times three equals Y. Well, let's first check. Does 0 0.6 times three equal 1.8? 0 0.6 times 3, 18, that becomes a 1. Yes, okay, so Avi, we first need to check that he's actually correct. Now, let's think of another point that we could do. Um, let's make x 1, okay? So if x is 1, then that means 1 times 3 equals 3. So the x is 1 the y value is three. So one, oh, you know what? I'm sorry, that was too big. We can't even do, we can't do something that um, big because we don't have enough space on here. So instead, let's do um, zero. Zero times three equals y. So this is x, zero times three is gonna equal zero. So this is y. So zero, zero, we could say it could be um, Avi's other point just to make it easier for us. So let's draw Avi's line here. And I'm going to label that it is Avi's line. All right. Let's check Ezra's line. Ezra is saying x equals 0 0.6. So that means we can make the y value anything we want. Um, the line is going to end up being like this. So if it goes through this point and he's saying it's a vertical line, it means his line is going to look like this. That x value is always going to equal 0 0.6, which is right here. All right, that is Ezra's line. And then lastly, we have Eric. He says X plus 1.2 equals Y. So let's say X is um, 1.2. 1.2 plus 1.2 equals, ah, that gives us something too big too. I keep forgetting our scale only goes to two, so I'm actually needing to make this a lot smaller. Um, let's say x is 0 0.8 plus 1.2. When you add those together, that gets you to two. So x would be 0 0.8. The y value is two. Okay, so I'm going to plot that. Uh, 0 0.8 and then Two. So his line would be kind of crazy. It'd be a little bit up here more. All right. So that is Eric's line. Okay. So explain how it's possible. Draw the lines on your coordinate plane. So I'm just going to talk about how this is possible. Um, Mrs. Boyd only gave one point, and that one point was 0 0.6, 1.8. So there's lots of lines that could contain that point. Um, if she were to give two points, then you would need, um, you know, this wouldn't all work. But there could be so many more lines that go this way, this way, you know. There's lots of other possibilities when you only give one point. All right, um, you have less than 12 pages assigned for today. Good luck.